Today's episode of Because Science is sponsored by Capcom. Super strength is not always obvious. Sure, a hero bending something like a steel beam or punching through a brick wall is a dead giveaway, but what about immense strength hiding in plain sight? Say that you were a hunter tasked with slaying giant monsters with similarly giant weaponry. How strong would you have to be to wield one of these things and be a monster hunter? In Capcom's new installment of the Monster Hunter series, Monster Hunter World, you're a newbie hunter in a strange land, and your job is to track and take down massive beasts with an ever-growing arsenal of large beast beaters. Like many popular action RPGs, Monster Hunter swords can be bigger even than the hunters themselves. And this got me thinking, wouldn't bigger swords mean strength bigger than anything a typical swordsman or swordswoman would have? And what would that value be? Now, I could do what we usually do on this show. Pick an example sword, then use some scientific principles and some theorizing to calculate something and come to a decent conclusion about said swords. But because this is a special episode that I have partnered with Capcom on, I wanted to do something special for you. This episode is going to be a hands-on investigation. So let's go. <laughs> Our investigation is going to begin with fan favorite. Our investigation today is going to begin with fan favorite monster returning to Monster Hunter World, Devil Joe. And I don't have any markers. Hey, and this monster is a gargantuan tyrannosauroid that is big enough that it can have even other monsters crushed inside its massive jaws. From the remains of this monster, you can craft the weapon known as the Berserker Sword. And look at how impressive this thing is. This fits the bill perfectly, so that's what we're looking at today. And to properly analyze, uh, and to properly analyze this sword, what we want for our hands-on investigation, if we want to do it right, is an accurate prop, which we can get. Spin move. And from this prop, we can get the volume of the sword. Volume multiplied by density, which we can estimate is equal to mass. So if we can get the volume of the sword from the prop and estimate a density, we can get the mass of our sword, which will be the first step in determining how much strength, some physical force, how much of it it will take for you to wield it. So let's go do that now. Giant swords in action RPGs are very common, but Throughout history, swords in real life never got that big or that bulky. One of the longest was the Japanese Odachi, which got about 1.5 meters in length, almost six feet. And one of the bulkiest, the heaviest of swords in human history, the two-handed <laughs> great swords, only got about six and a half kilograms worth of mass, about 15 pounds. I have a feeling, just looking at the Berserker Sword, that it's gonna make those two historical examples look like toothpicks. Now, I may be a science boy, but I'm definitely no prop maker, so that's why I came to this prop shop and enlisted the help of one Clint Carney. Hey, Clint. Hey. Lower third, bam! How you like that? Are you ready to be my smithy today? I am. Okay, sounds good. So you get started on the build, and I'm gonna talk more about the cool science involved. Sound good? Yeah. I'm it's ready. a time mission, Clint. I gotta go. Okay, now while Clint is busy with the build, we still have to estimate the density of our Berserker Sword material. Now, the Berserker Sword is made out of the biological material of Devil Joe, more specifically the fangs, the talons, the saliva, and the scales. 
At least in the game, it looks like the sword is mostly made out of scales and talons, and they look vaguely reptilian because Devil Joe looks like a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, in the real world, reptiles have scales and talons that are made out of the structural protein known as keratin. And keratin, for example, is what makes your hair, uh, like hair and it is slightly more dense than water. It has a density of 1.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, this is much less dense than other common sword materials like iron or steel, but it's still gonna make our sword very, very heavy and hard to wield because of the sword's potential volume, which we still have to figure out. So, let's go check on Clint. Whoa! <laughs> this looks fantastic! Great work, Clint! This is perfect. It definitely looks just as formidable as it does in the game. We could easily, oh, we could easily get all of the measurements that we need from this. What? You're, you're still gonna pay me, right? Clint, it's a timed mission! Leave me, go! Leave me to my measurements! Also, thank you. <laughs> Measuring time. Six. Nice. Okay, so I've done all of my measuring, and what I did is break down this very complicated shape into more simplistic shapes, like three-dimensional rectangles and cubes. You do that, and you add up all of their volumes, and you get a total volume. I got 0 0.13 cubic meters, which doesn't sound like much until you realize that's 34 gallons of sword. Now, if you multiply that volume by the density, that we assume for the Berserker Sword, that of keratin, you get a total mass for this beast of 170 kilograms, 370 pounds of sword. That is like having two or three or four adults sitting on the end of your blade. Now, just from that, I think you can tell that you need a lot of strength just to handle this thing, but you'd need even more to wield it. Swinging swords around is hard, not just because swords are heavy, but also because how that heavy is distributed. This is the science of moments, or rotational forces. And moments get bigger or smaller depending on how far that force is away from a rotational point. So for example, if I have my arm here and I pull down on my forearm, the force away from my elbow is gonna create a rotational force at my elbow. But if I then pull down on my wrist twice as far away, that rotational force or torque doubles. We can use the science of moments to determine the real strength that we would need to wield a berserker sword by calculating the torque that we would need to generate at our wrists in order to move it around or at least just hold it up off of the ground. That means determining where the weight of this sword acts relative to where we're holding the sword down at the hilt. That all means we have to determine the center of mass for this sword. That's hard to do for irregular objects like this, but you can do it, and you can try it at home. All you need is a piece of paper, some paper clips, and a piece of string. Now, what you wanna do is poke holes at the very edge of this piece of paper. Then you are going to systematically take the paper clip, insert it into one of those holes, get everything stabilized and free to swing and see where the line of action is, where gravity is pulling the paper clips. This is gonna give you an indication of where the center of mass is, but you have to do it all the way around an object. So I'm gonna go through that process right now. Doing all that, I determined that the center of mass for this irregularly shaped piece of paper is right here. Now, all I have to do is replicate this somewhat cumbersome process with something slightly more uh, complicated. Just give me one sec. Oh! Oh, it's actually heavy! Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So with a little bit of math and some science, I determined that the center of mass for this sword is about a meter away from where I am applying the rotational force at my wrists, about three feet. So if you take the real Berserker Sword's weight, about 1,650 Newtons, and multiply that by that distance from the center of mass to my hands, you get around 1,500 Newton meters of torque. 
This is more than one of the fastest and most powerful supercars ever produces at its wheels, the Bugatti Veyron. And you'd have to produce even more torque than this if you wanted to swing the sword around with any kind of intention. Okay, I gotta put it down just a second. Oh, we'll get to the science, we'll get more science in a second, just a second, oh. Oh, man. So, how strong would you really have to be to be a monster hunter? Well, not only would you have to reliably be able to pick up sometimes hundreds of kilograms, you'd have to generate supercar levels of torque at your flimsy human shoulders and elbows and wrists. This is possible to do in our favorite video games, but in reality, the devil Joe's in the details. Because science, I'm gonna take this bad boy home. <laughs> it is too heavy. One more time, still too heavy. I don't know what, why they would... Come with me, son! Thanks again to Capcom for sponsoring today's episode of Because Science. You can get Monster Hunter World right now on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And it's a lot of fun. If you want more of me, head back to Nerdist.com or follow me and all the nerdy stuff that we do here over on these platform places. Thanks.